Good morning. So it is morning, hence the morning coffee. So I woke up this morning and decided to, you know, just check some messages, check some of my YouTube comments. Kind of had this epiphany and I said, this would make a good episode of sort of the behind the behind the scenes of the fly tire. And in checking some of my comments, you know, I, I recognized that there was a lot of people that they were asking for very specific um, ingredients or the recipe. And I get that. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to bash on it. Don't get me wrong. But they were asking for specifics, right? So, for example, I had one gentleman ask me, you know, uh, what type of hook is that? And I didn't know because I, I, you know, I, I do my videos, I record them. And whether it's a real or a short or an actual full out tutorial, I do them ahead of time. Right. And then I'll, I'll record them uh, and then I'll edit them later and then post them maybe at a, even a later date. So I didn't quite remember, um, but I could tell just by looking at the video that it was uh, a caddis hook, but I didn't know like the brand and he's, and then, you know, his reply was, um, well, that's not useful at all. And, you know, <laughs> at first I was like, oh, okay, sorry. Um, but, but I get it. I, I, I get it. You know, he's, I had to sort of put myself in his shoes and I take it that, you know, he was a beginner fly tire and he wanted to, he wanted to, to replicate what I tied to the T and, you know, Obviously, I'm flattered, but that's when it also dawned on me that not everyone is going to have all the materials, sizes, shapes, colors. They're not going to have it at their disposal. There's this misconception that a specific fly pattern needs to be tied exactly the same way as the instructor set out. And that actually couldn't be further from the truth, in my opinion. At the end of the day, not everybody's going to have a variety of materials like these fly shops have, right? A lot of these instructors are not, not only well-established anglers or well-established fly tires and known in the industry, but I found the majority of them also have some form of fly shop, hence why they have so many things at their disposal. And I get it. They're trying to sell things. They're trying to run their business. I get it. I get it. I'm not trying to hate on any of it, but a typical fly tire. Yeah. This, this, this hobby can get expensive, right? So the point of all of this really was any fly you tie, it doesn't need to be exact. You work with what you have period. I was toying with this idea of a specific nymph pattern, you know, based on my waters, based on what I've seen, I'm going to come up with a pattern with the materials that I have. Here's where this behind the scenes come into play. Number one, what type of fly was it? I said, I know it was going to be a nymph. Number two, I said, okay, well, sizes, sizes can like every fly will range. What, what do I want it to look like? Like what are those? colors and that is one category is the color scheme or theme so i knew it was going to be a nymph i kind of knew what size i kind of knew what kind of hook i wanted it on and now the colors and i wanted to go with a neutral or not neutral uh yeah i guess neutral colors brownish natural colors sand tones etc i'm going to walk you through sort of my thought process on what i was going through and I did stop myself because I, as I was doing it, that's when I thought of this video and the messages I was checking this morning. Let's get some coffee. Oh man, that's good. So here's my bench. I knew I said I wanted, I wanted some jig style hooks. Um, so I got my jig box out and you know, I typically, as I'm starting to design or come up with concepts, I'll start on the larger side just because they're a little bit easier to tie. Um, so I'm going to go with a size 12 jig hook. And then you always want to find some things that are proportionate to the fly, right? You always want to find, like, you don't want to put like, I don't know, like a 2.4 millimeter bead on a 
size 12 hook because it's just going to look way too tiny. Things are going to look disproportionate. So I kind of know just through experience that, you know, with a size 12, a 3.2 millimeter, 3.8, um, it's going to look very sort of proportionate. Um, but then I got like the different colors at my disposal, right? So let's bring this down here. So I got a variety of colors in my 3.8 box. Fluorescent orange, silvers, uh, fluorescent chartreuse, golds, uh, not that much, running low. Um, but we're going to leave that because I don't know yet. Um, and then for the, 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 the nymph in general, um, obviously you got you know, you got the standards things for like your tail, abdomen, ribbing, thorax, uh, legs, and possibly a wing case. So those are the, the things that are going through my mind. Well, what am I going to use for uh, a tail? So when you get stuck on what, what do you want to do? Um, I kind of revert back to the ones that have been tried, tested, and just been around for decades, if not centuries and you want to look at things like the pheasant tail nymph and the pheasant tail nymph as you know is all pheasant tail right you got pheasant tail for the tail but again i want to try to be a bit different i want to try to come up with something on my own a little bit different concept and as beautiful as pheasant tail is so let's bring this back down here um like some pheasant tail uh, like all birds and feathers are, are, are different um, and they have different unique markings. And as much as I love pheasant tail and as much as I use it, I wanted something a little bit different. So you start to explore what you have. And again, sticking with, I want it to be with the, uh, the browns, natural colors. I start exploring what other options do I have? If I don't want to use pheasant tail, what do I use? So go down to my, my stash and I start looking at other things. Um, whatever I have here, or uh, I've got some peacock, mallard, more canard. All right, so I start looking at what else I got. Um, now for tails, I mean, options are kind of endless. You can kind of use whatever you want. Um, but here's all my sort of soft tackles and this stuff I love. I, I use this ring neck pheasant skin for a lot of things, um, tails, legs, wing cases, soft tackles, I mean, you name it, but you can see the markings aren't that unique. I wanted something different. So let's swing this back here. And I'm just going to move this stuff to the side. I just kind of want to see what I got here. To go through what are my options. So I got some hens. But again, to limit the choices, we're going to break it down to the colors that I said I wanted to do. Um, we got partridges. So this one is, this is a grizzly hen uh, in the color sand and it's nice and all right the, the markings are, are quite nice and kind of very translucent not a bad option not what I'm really looking for I want unique markings uh, a perfect example of a, a, a bird that has very Awesome, awesome sort of markings and patterns would be um, Cock de Leon feathers. And, you know, with the speckled and stuff. And that's kind of what I think I'm looking for. So here's another hen saddle. Kind of same concept and color. It's not bad. We then come up to this, uh, this natural speckled brown. So the speckled brown, this is, this is really nice. I'm kind of leaning towards this. So if you, I'm not sure if that's going to come up on camera nicely enough, but the patterning on this is phenomenal. Um, this would make for great 
tail and legs for sure and is the color that i wanted so i'm this is definitely top top two top three um and then we go to the you know i got some partridges here too which also some of them can have very amazing patterns like here's this brown partridge i think that's gonna be phenomenal yeah for sure so this is this is good i like this and i don't know how clear that's gonna come out on camera but the speckles the markings on this are amazing so this is this is good enough for me i this is i'm probably going to use this brown partridge for my tail um, and my legs just because i like to have some things match um, so there's that i'm going to put that to the side so i'm going to build that out based on what i've chosen just going to put all these back and again I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but I just want to bring it back to this is what I have. So even though what you may have watched on YouTube um, or another tutorial of some sort, if they say, OK, well, you need to have this Grizzly Whiting's Farm Cree Hackle. I mean, I don't have 150 bucks spent on Cree Hackle. Uh, not right now. Um, I don't have it. So does that mean I don't tie the fly? Right, so let me repeat that. Just because the, the recipe says I need this super expensive Cree hackle, does that mean I don't tie the fly? Do I just give up? The answer is hell no. Work with what you got, guys, please. This is the message I'm trying to communicate here is that I don't want you to stop tying just because you don't have a specific material. That's the point. So I don't have my Cree hackle, but I got a partridge that I like. I got the hooks that I like. And now we're going to go through the other steps of, you know, the ribbing, abdomen. And we're going to try to keep it a little bit more simple. Um, I find the buggier, the simpler, um, the more fish you're going to catch. Um, so let's, let's continue onward. So let me put this down. Okay, so I'm going to put the rest of my soft tackles away. And then we are going to work on ribbing. So ribbing, again, you can choose. I typically like to match. If I'm going to use it on a bead, bead head. Um, I like my ribbing material color to match my bead. But you don't have to. So for simplicity's sakes, I got my size 12 jig hook. You know what? I'm going to go with the silver. I'm going to go with the silver 3.2 millimeter slotted tungsten bead. And for the ribbing, so many options. I like tinsel. Tinsel, tinsel can be really, really a really nice touch to your ribbing. Um, not as durable as, say, wire. But let's go with, I'm going to go with, here, small gold wires. So size small is good for a size 12, 14 uh, patterns. And I'm just going to stick with standard gold. For the body, again, look to, look to the dubbing materials that you have. Right? So I have a, I have a bunch. If you've seen other video tutorials, you may have seen that I, I do have a lot. Uh, I'm fortunate that way, but that's not the case for everybody, right? Um, so again, work with what you have. Um, the squirrel box is probably my favorite just because it's got so many natural looking colors. Um, very buggy, spiky, got some of those guard hairs in there to add that to the bugginess factor. Um, so if anything, guys, if if you don't have squirrel 
dubbing, go get some. Stuff's awesome. So, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go with the squirrel. On that note, I'm just going to stick with the squirrel dubbing that I got on hand. All right, we're going to put the rest of this back. Right, again, so the recipe, I got obviously what you're going to see out there in the world. You're going to see a fly pattern that you like, and they're going to be like, you need to have the Semperfly K-Pok dubbing in gray-brown. Not everybody's going to have it. Just because you don't have it, don't let that stop you from tying the fly. So I got my hook, bead, tail, wings, ribbing, body or abdomen. And then I'm going to go probably a darker color on the thorax area. But again, sticking with the squirrel. One box, two colors. And then for the wing case, I'll just stick with a standard pheasant tail. I'll just use pheasant tail for the wing case. And that concept will sort of come to life. And yeah, it's not going to be exact. It's not going to be exact to what you watched. But that's okay. So I'm going to go and spin this up. And I'll show you the end result. Stay tuned. All right, folks. So here it is. This is the fly that we that I tied with the materials that I had on hand. Let me try to let me try to get this in focus for you. Oops, almost knocked over my lamp. Okay, so let's see if I can get this in focus for you. Okay, so there's a bead that's on the jig hook. My hair's your body, partridge tail, and wing case. Wings are, the legs are, uh, sorry, legs, and the legs are a little longer than I'd like. Um, pheasant tail, that's not getting in focus whatsoever. Pheasant tail for the wing case. The whole point for everything is work with what you have build up your materials um over time don't feel like you need to go dump five hundred thousand dollars up front i mean that's just kind of absurd get your wraps in get your practice in build up your materials as you start to progress work with what you have but don't stop tying a video simply because you don't have a specific material um anyways that is i think that's all i have to say for today uh, it was kind of like a mini rant, and <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I'm hoping that it sheds some light on not everything, not every fly needs to be tied to the exact recipe. If you want to stick with the classics and be very traditional, then by all means, right? We we owe respect to those to those patterns, um, and definitely tie them up and learn the history. But at the same time, don't be afraid to step outside the box and get your fly boxes filled and start fishing. Get out there, enjoy every moment. I appreciate y'all. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to the next one. Cheers.